Hello, everybody. Are we ready? Chat with Leaders Media Team. Sweet. All right. Uh, first off, some housekeeping notes. Uh, it wouldn't be an event Nathan hosted if those plates weren't compostable, so make sure they don't go in the trash. Paper towels as well. They're made out of bamboo. So um, I, I do my best. I have to stay on brand. So uh, just quick good evening to everybody, and honestly, thanks for coming out in this weather because... I don't know. I might speed through this because it doesn't look good. So and I know we had some people come up from Atlanta as well and some of the students from Emory. Um, so very grateful that they're here. For those that don't know me, I'm Nathan Stuck. I'm the chair, founder and chair of Be Local Georgia. Um, and I guess I'm tonight's host slash MC. Some of you also know me as the director of corporate culture and strategic impact at Advictorium Solutions a Bulldog 100 honoree and a top 20 UGA employer. Yeah, how's that for a shameless plug? All right. Um, others might know me as their teacher in the MBA program in their B Corp class, or just the guy that graduated years ago and is still walking around Corel Hall. And then some of you just know me for, as your neighbor from Normaltown that uh, never stops talking to them about B Corps. But I am grateful for each and every one of you for being here tonight. We have a great lineup of speakers and I've seen some wonderful networking happening, still happening, and hope it continues to happen long after the event. But before I get any further, I just wanna thank some of our amazing partners um, for making this night possible. First off, my fellow B Corp, Creature Comforts. Um, literally Allie, Matt, Fenwick, Chris, this whole crew, Katie and Randy, for helping with the logistics. Creature provided us with this space and has been a tremendous partner. Back to the good old days when Zach and I were harassing Matt and following him around and sending him emails telling him why Creature Comforts would make the best B Corp ever. Um, we finally wore him down and Creature's now one of our successful B Collaborative alumni and a certified B Corp. <laughs> Took forever, that was awesome though. Um, good work, Zach. Second, the University of Georgia, uh, Dr. Chatterjee. I see Jake Mosley. I don't see Lee Britton. Um, Dean Ayers, the now retired Dr. Sutherland. I see Paul Lair out there, Kevin Kirshey, Tara Byers, everybody from the Terry College of Business in the Office of Sustainability um, that has been such an incredible partner and, and literally lifted us on your shoulders to make this happen. Um, just want to give you a quick thank you and also uh, thanks for paying for the food. Jake also looks wonderful in that Wander North Georgia hat. Um, also, just quick shout outs to both Munch Hut and Chat with Leaders Media. That's this weirdo up here taking pictures of everybody and those awesome people in the back with the food. Um, so Be Local Georgia is a nonprofit. I don't really, I mean, I don't have the numbers to charge member dues. I don't plan on charging member dues. I rarely charge for events and I don't really do a lot of fundraising. So uh, to say we're balling on a budget is an understatement. So Munch Hut and Chat with Leaders both were really awesome in working within our budgets and uh, making this happen and being here and supporting us. And um, just thank you very much. So let's give a quick round of applause to our favorite brewery, our favorite university, our favorite late night munchy stop, because I hear Munch Hut's the place to go at 2.30 in the morning, according to my students. And our favorite up and coming media production company. Thank you to all of you. So I have to say, I always love this Athens event. This is the, what would be the fourth year. There was a little thing happened last year called COVID. We didn't get to have an event, but this is the fourth year we've done one of these. And honestly, the first one was a panel right here that Zach organized. Um, I think the next year we did it at CNA and then we came across the street and the networking was going to like 11 and I, Friday morning was difficult. And uh, obviously last year, nothing, but this is this is our fourth one. And different from our Atlanta events, I think the special thing about these is that we get so many students. We get so many academics. We have academics and teachers and professors from UGA, from Emory that are here. We have students, um, we have business leaders, we have nonprofit leaders. So it's it's a unique crowd. And one of the reasons I love doing this event also, for those of you who don't know, I live here. Um, I've lived here for almost 20 years. So this is as close as I get to like 
being able to tee it up between the hedges. So hosting this event is, is an awesome experience for me. Oh, there's so many parallels here, Zach, but for those of you who don't know me, like I have this vision of Athens that I'll talk your ear off about. I, I like to call us, or my dream is, you know, the Asheville of the South and Asheville is like three hours north of us, but Asheville has 100,000 residents and they have nine B Corps. We have 125,000 residents and we only have two. But to make a really bad dad joke in this venue, change is a brewing. Oh, I can't recover from that one. So, but um, honestly, Emory Group was number one a couple of years ago. Shout out Luis Emory, who couldn't make it tonight. But Luis Emory was our first successful, like one semester students working on a project to actually hitting submit. And then Creature was, was basically our second. And we're building this little Athens Empire of B Corps here. And this year, out of our B Collaborative, we actually have a formal class running at UGA. And we have six projects, and four of them are out of Athens. So we have Ambactus Group. Where, where'd Jay go? There's Jay. So Jay and his son Mark. Mark's the UGA alum. That's one of our projects. We also have w &A Engineering. For those of you who don't know who uh, John Williams is and all the great work they do in this community and then beyond and they're scaling like crazy. So we're helping them. And then I don't see him here, but Peter Dale, my beloved Peter Dale, who was already working on the Condor project. And then we had a project back out and I called Peter and I said, Maypole is like the most B Corpish thing you could ever come out with. There's no trash cans. It's only compost and recycling. Your team all seems happy. And Peter literally just told me, let's do it. So Peter's running two projects and we have 19 students working on these projects, but again, four out of Athens and another Athens company, by the way, is in the queue. And another one of our UGA alumni projects, Brighter Investing is about to hit submit. So this is one of those where I should probably stop and go like, does everybody know what a B Corp is? Oh, be careful. Um, so for those of you who don't know, welcome to the party. But B Corps are certified benefit corporations that uh, focus on stakeholder primacy, and they embed that into their legal DNA. They go through a rigorous assessment with a maximum of 200 points. They have to score at least 80. And then once you score 80, you have to go through a verification queue and an audit queue by the um, independent nonprofit B Lab, which Kelly is here somewhere from B Lab, and you'll get to hear from her later tonight as well. So, simply put, B Corp certification is to business what LEED is to a building, or what USDA certified organic is to milk. And I would also say, simply put, it's the gold standard of corporate social responsibility. And in the state of Georgia, we have, we had 18, one relocated to Kentucky. We have 17 certified B Corps. And then we have five companies currently in the queue. And then I believe three others ready to hit submit. And then we, like I said, six projects going through UGA, two awesome projects going through Emory. Um, to say we're going to hit 25 or 30 by the end of the next year is not an understatement. And with a power in numbers, we will start to actually see people understand what a B Corp is, what it means to work for a B Corp, what it means to buy from a B Corp. So excited on that front. But our goal isn't necessarily to rest on those laurels and just kind of pump the brakes. I can think of 25 companies in Athens that should be B Corps, let alone in Atlanta, Savannah, and the rest of the state. We won't be happy with just two universities either. We want to expand. We want to break, bring these projects to some of our HBCUs. Zach's been meeting with Kennesaw State and really make Georgia the leader, the University of Georgia the leader, but the state of Georgia also as the leader in this region for the B Corp movement and what it means to put stakeholders before shareholders. And that's why I'm excited to see everyone tonight. It's about building a better tomorrow, full of purpose and profit. And you're going to hear from some of our most important stakeholders tonight discussing their work and their desired impact. And they're also going to convey to you how we and us and you as individuals can get off the sidelines, get involved, 
and help make that possible. So without further ado, our next speaker um, is Kelly Carter from B Lab. So like by night, she literally is the co-founder of Climate Fight Georgia. She's like a lot of people you're going to hear from today. They wear like 13 hats. Um, and then by day, she's a sustainability analyst at B Lab, the nonprofit that oversees and certifies B corporations. So she's one of those people you get on the call with at the end of the journey and you're fighting for every point you can with. Um, she guest lectured uh, about a month ago in our new B Corp class. And I was a little worried where I was like, oh, she's really good at this. Um, I was sitting there enthralled. So if her guest lecture is anything like what she's going to do tonight, I think we're on for a real treat. So uh, Kelly Carter. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you to Be Local Georgia, Creature Comforts for having us all here today. I'm very excited to come speak. As Nathan said, my name is Kelly Carter. I'm a graduate of UGA's Terry College of Business, so I'm also very excited that with Dr. Chatterjee and all of the great programs at Terry, that there's really an emphasis on sustainability going forward. And also thrilled to be back in Athens, too. What I'm really excited about tonight is being able to talk a little bit about my passion for the B Corp movement and share a little bit more about it with all of y'all. As Nathan mentioned, I work for B Lab, which is the nonprofit that certifies B Corps. And I think, Nathan, you talked a little bit about this earlier, but you may be wondering, what is a B Corp? So B Corps, certified B Corps, are businesses that meet the highest standards of social and environmental performance, public accountability, public transparency, and legal accountability to profit and purpose. And I figure most of you, are, you all are here today because you believe in using business as a force for good or creating a greater change in the world. And that's really what the B Corp movement's all about. The movement is really trying to shift the current or more so 20th century approach of state shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism. So shifting from just focusing on profitability to really creating value and benefiting your community, customers, the environment, and your workers as well. And on top of this, not only is doing this I think the most ethical way to do business, it's what consumers are demanding and it's what the market's wanting. I've been reading over a number of different studies and one of the ones that I wanted to kind of briefly mention was from the Economist Intelligence Unit that showed there is a 71% rise in popularity of searches for sustainable goods in the past five years. So this was throughout the COVID-19 pandemic as well. There's a very high demand for this. So. You may, outside of the demand for sustainable and consciously made, ethically made goods, there's a lot of benefits to being a B Corp as well. And I specifically work with these companies that are going through the certification and verification process, have a lot of conversations with them. And for me, I kind of group the benefits that I hear them speaking about into three different categories. First of which is differentiation. The second of which is continuous improvement. And the third of which is financial benefits. So for the first benefit of becoming a B Corp, differentiation, a lot of B Corps say that differentiation is a very powerful tool for them to stand out from competitors. Being a B Corp requires a lot of a rigorous review that allows for you to prove that you are walking the talk, that you really are authentically creating impact in your work. And a lot of competitors won't be able to say that. They don't have the certification. It adds credibility and lets consumers know that you're a standout. On top of that, it's also just great for your own marketing and branding and PR purposes as well. In addition to that, when it comes to hiring talent, especially from the millennial, Gen Z generations, we're really looking for an employer that we feel that allows for us to create something greater in the world. B Corps, as part of the certification process, are really mission and purpose-driven companies. So that's a great, point and a key point for being a B Corp and hiring talent as well. For the second big benefit, continuous improvement, I've got a lot to say about this one, but in becoming certified, you have to take the B impact assessment. And I think as Nathan mentioned, you have to score 80 out of 200 points that really showcases your social and environmental performance through your operations and your business model. But this B impact assessment is also a fantastic tool for continuous improvement. 
The B Impact Assessment contains a number of different questions that businesses can then use and build off as metrics to track their improvement. Additionally, once becoming a B Corp, you do have to recertify every three years to continue to prove that you are creating the impact that you say that you're creating, that you're continuously improving your business. So it holds you accountable for continuous improvement in the social and, social and environmental goals as well. Additionally, a new assessment is released every three years, and there are new questions in this assessment. A lot of the questions do remain the same to allow for that benchmarking aspect, but these newer questions introduce newer and evolving best practices in the CSR realm. So it's a fantastic way for your business to stay on top of social and environmental trends and such as well. Personally, one of my favorite things about the B Corp movement and one of the things that I hear the most about from the companies that I work with is the collaborative community around it. As you can see, so many people showed up today to learn more and talk about doing business better. And from becoming a B Corp, you get access to very exclusive programs that allow for you to network with other businesses that are B Corps. So there's over 4,000 B Corps, so you've got a lot of different individuals that you can speak with and learn from through either round tables or community events. And I find that that's one of the biggest key takeaways and values of being a B Corp. Lastly, for the third big uh, beneficial kind of category that I feel a lot of companies speak to is the financial benefits. As part of the review that I do, I look at company suppliers. And a lot of the companies purchase from other B Corps because B Corps will offer discounts to other B Corps. I think too, from a business perspective, it's nice because you know that the supplier that you're purchasing from is doing business ethically and that you can trust that coming, purchasing those products or services, you know that they're treating their employees properly, that they're involved in the local community and that they are respectful to the environment. Additionally, for those businesses that are trying to raise capital or are looking into impact investing, being a B Corp is a huge plus too. Um, we see a lot of impact investing firms pushing for this and having companies take the assessment and observing their score, the different areas of material impact for these companies before deciding to invest. Now, I know that I've probably maybe taken uh, five minutes and I could honestly talk about this for much longer. So please come find me afterwards if you're interested. But once again, thank you to Be Local Georgia, Creature Comforts for having us all here today. And if you're interested in using your business as a force for good, please come talk to me in Be Local Georgia and all the folks, Nathan, Zach, everyone um, that have been mentioned through Dr. Chatterjee's speech and Nathan's introduction to learn more. So thank you again. Now it's time to move on to two of my favorite people. Look at Allie's like, oh God. Um, so we've built our special relationship with Creature Comforts over the past three to four years. Um, going back to what I referenced earlier when literally I kid, but I don't kid that Zach was a student. I was an alumni and we were like going back. We were doing the sales tactic where like one person's emailing Matt and then he stops responding. So then the other person would start emailing Matt and then we'd like, hey, he's not answering my emails anymore. And we're like dropping him off the B Corp handbook, getting him to read it. And then one day Matt picks up the phone or well, it's probably an email because it's like 2019. But he goes, hey, I think we're ready to do that B Corp certification thing. So and and then on top of that, Matt's an Athenian. We live in the same neighborhood. I've seen him out with his kids walking. He's seen me with my dogs. We've run into each other at Kroger. We've also run into each other on uh, New Year's Eve at Jay's Bottle Shop. And in Matt's defense, he was pre purchasing Creature Comforts beer. Didn't know he had to purchase it, but he was. So staying true to brands. And then Matt's best move. So we finish our projects. We get them the roadmap for improvement. And then Matt makes what might be the smartest decision of his professional career. And Allie's shaking her head no, but it's Allie. Um, and he brings Allie on to help take the roadmap our students gave them, finish the rest of the B Corp certification, and also oversee this little side project they have called Get Comfortable. So um, they're going to come up here right now and talk a little bit about the journey a little bit about why they certified as a B Corp, and then tell you a little bit about Get Comfortable, its origins, and then the difference that it's making in the communities they serve. So Allie and Matt, come on up. We got two mics too, so. Thanks, Nathan. Um, thank you all, welcome to our home. This is our home away from home. <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, what I'm going to try to do is really kind of connect the dots in terms of what does it look like for a business to enter into this journey and to eventually see it through. And so while this journey truly does stem back to our origins, April 2014, when we opened our doors, if we were to have our founders on stage um, and say, why did you start Creature Comforts? They would all give you some sort of answer that in, in, in my interpretation of their words, we thought that a business should be here that makes Athens better. But Athens should be better because because this business is here. Um, so flash forward from 2014 and really key in the ignition for our B Corp journey really was almost three years ago, as Nathan said, under this pavilion, but before we built all this lovely woodwork above us, um, October 30th, 20, uh, 2018. I'm just on a panel of this net impact event and just kind of telling some of the creature story. After the end of that time, I meet Zach Godfrey, who I believe was in your first year of MBA. And are you all familiar with like the theory of twos? Have you ever heard of that? Where like you've never heard of anything ever and then you hear about it. And then within like 48 hours, you start seeing that same thing everywhere. Theory of twos. That for me was B Corp. I hear about it from Zach. A few days later, you start seeing it on New Belgium uh, packaging and Ben and Jerry's and Patagonia. And I'm out, you know, skiing later and I see the coffee shop I'm in is the B Corp. And you start seeing this logo and you start like kind of tracking with it. But that is all to say, Zach, as Nathan said, he put the B Corp impact, or I'm sorry, the B Corp handbook in my hands. And when you open that B Corp handbook and you see the, you know, the declaration of interdependence on literally page zero, and it starts saying things like, to quote from it, <clears throat> that we acknowledge that business ought to be conducted as if people in place mattered. Yes, that's exactly what we believe at Creature Comforts. Um, to do so requires that we act with the understanding that each are dependent upon another and thus responsible for each other and future generations that we should be not looking to meet the needs of today while robbing the generations of tomorrow. So that is all to say, we start reading this book here at Creature. I pass it to the CEO and I'm essentially saying, this is a framework that is outlining precisely the sort of business that we want to become. And so flash forward from, you know, essentially October, 2018 to August, 2019, that is when we officially began our journey with the Terry College, with their B Collaborative program, which practically meant they assigned to us these four incredible high capacity MBA students to really study us for a semester. And there was really two deliverables that we were asking from this group of grad students. Essentially, we're going to give you access to everything. Um, help us understand what is our actual raw score. And at the end of that semester, they let us know that we're out of those 80 points that you need for certification. We were sitting at, I think, officially 60.1 points. So it was good to know where you stand without any intervention and without any kind of path forward. But then secondarily, they gave us that path forward. They said, here is the playbook. Here is your journey from 60.1 points to 80 points and beyond. Um, and so November 2019, the Terry College gives us this entire playbook, this roadmap forward. Um, and then finally... To Nathan's point, we make an outstanding hire in Allie Hellinga. She joins us, I believe, January 6, 2020, a crazy year to join any new endeavor, as we all found out. But that is able to say, I was able to say, um, Allie, here's one of our goals. We want to seek certification. We want to make our way to 80 points. And because of this wonderful partnership with Terry College, here is the way to do that. So I'll now pass the baton to Allie to take us across the finish line. Yeah, so as Matt mentioned, I joined the Creature family in January of 2020, a really, really strange time to start a new endeavor. Uh, but at the same time, I was just super excited because I really believed since day one of, you know, the wonderful work this brewery is doing here in the community. So I was very happy to be a part of it. Um, but I will say I showed up and in my first job description, one of my responsibilities was seeing through RB Corp certification in the year of 2020. And I said, oh, that's not a daunting task at all. Um, but luckily, the same day, you know, January 6th, I stepped into the office for my first time. And on my desk, you know, I had all of those deliverables that Matt just mentioned from that powerhouse team of UGA students. And when I say that was like instrumental in our certification, like, I mean it, I am not joking around. I showed up day one, had a baseline score on our B impact assessment. Y'all, this assessment, you heard Kelly talk about it. It's, it's no joke. 
And like, I didn't even have to walk us through that. Like, what a blessing is that? I just show up and I have a baseline. And on top of that, they also provided a roadmap forward for us. So they provided, you know, unique steps, very specific for Creature and said, you know what? If you want to bridge that point gap, here's every single thing you need to do to move that score from 60 to the 80 points required for certification. And like, this was honestly catalytic. I was thinking about it as I was prepping for this uh, conversation and I was like, where do you think we'd still be today? Like maybe in the verification queue, maybe had we not partnered with uh, UGA's B Collaborative Program. So again, I can't speak highly or more highly of this program. And if you're a business in attendance this evening, looking to partner with them, do it, do it, do it. They were like a huge, huge factor in us going through the certification. But, you know, came in in January and I had these awesome roadmaps and tools forward to help us pursue our certification. So what I did then was continue to split up this work, y'all. So I created a B team of different creatures here. They're the A teams in my heart and they know that, but they were my B team to get this process moving. And so I, you know, had our sustainability specialist speaking into the environmental section. We had our employee engagement coordinator really speaking into the workers impact area. Matt and I filled in a lot of the gaps on the community section. I mean, when I say this was a team effort, it was a team effort. And I will say, I think one of the beauties of the B impact assessment is how it's split up into those impact areas. So you really can bring the experts within your company around to help you work through and make those improvements. Um, so I will say, we kind of divided it all up. We had a lot of asynchronous work going on. And then we reached that one glorious day, probably like nine or 10 months, maybe, um, kind of like late in the year in 2020. And we said, you know what? We feel really confident that we have surpassed these 80 points. Matt and I had a celebratory beer and then we pressed submit on the B Impact Assessment and kind of held our breath as we awaited our fate in the verification queue. <laughs> but, um, you know, Gosh, so that was like nine or 10 months to bridge the gap. And then we had probably three to four, maybe five months in the verification queue. Yeah, it was April 2021. Matt has the memory. That's why he's up here with me. And I mean, y'all, when I say this verification process, I mean, this was probably the most stressful part of it, honestly, for me. But I will say, I mean, B Lab makes this process thorough for all the right reasons. Like if this was the easiest thing on the world, there would be a plethora of B Corps. Like there is a reason that this is a difficult process. So kept that in mind, um, had a lot of conversations with our um, B Corp analyst and worked our way through. And then Matt and I had another celebratory beer when we found out that we were indeed a certified B Corp. And I know we sent texts to Nathan and Zach and all these guys up here who really, Rob, who have really helped make this happen for us. But y'all, it has been a journey to say the very least, especially you've heard Matt and Nathan both, both talk about an event that took here back in 2018. And Matt, I'm gonna call on you for another number. Cause what was it like a thousand plus days from when you were first gifted that it was just handbook. south. It was yeah. officially 980 <laughs> days from the day that Zach put the handbook in my hand till we are a certified B Corp. Now, granted, you know, that delay is partially on me because it took me 10 months to actually get us moving. But then it's also I partially, you know, blame the pandemic because 2020 was a wacky year. Well, blame it on 2020. <laughs> but it, uh, Creature, one thing, I mean, we really talk about our values of making it better and of leaving a legacy. And I truly believe that, you know, us pursuing this certification really speaks into both of those values. You know, with this assessment, we are able to benchmark, we are able to, you know, see where we are, see what our superpowers are within this assessment. Like as we were taking it, we realized, hey, the community section is where we are scoring the highest amount of points. And so we kind of call that our, our B Corp superpower, if you will. But at the same time, also realizing, hey, this also identified some areas where we need to dig in and we need to be you know, a better business for 
our people, for our planet, for our community. And I really do think that we'll identify a few more superpowers as we continue down this path. Yeah. And just to kind of tag that, I would say there's really three distinct wins with really anything having to do with CSR. Number one is you get to take care of your own backyard. You get to answer the question, what is good for our people, our employees, what's good for our communities, what's good for our planet? That is its own victory when you take strides in any of that. Number two, certainly, you know, visible indicators that you are finding success in that, like B Corp certification. Secondarily, you get to, you know, to a certain extent, try to influence others. You get to, you know, be an example, tell a story and invite others to come along with you, which is very much what B Local is all about is, um, we're number 17. We want a lot more B Corps in this state. Um, but then I would say, additionally, once you are in the club, as it were, uh, it, you're not just in forever. B Lab continues to raise the bar over time, which, again, challenges you to make incremental improvements in all these different impact areas. And that is its own win as well. So that is to say there have been a lot of things that we were already doing that we just kind of codified and formalized and operationalized. But I would say to an even greater extent on our way to 80 points, but certainly the road ahead is we want to continue to raise that bar and challenge ourselves for some of those stretch goals. So um, there are so many benefits we could go on and on, just like everybody on this stage to talk about the rigor and the reward of this process, but we would certainly commend it to you. And by the way, if you're even thinking about it, please do feel free to reach out to us as what come up to us as well. We would love to tell you the business perspective, but I would say you would be crazy um, if you are a local business considering this sort of thing without bringing a partner along, such as specifically Terry College and their B Collaborative. Like Ali said, they really cracked the code for us and we're very, very grateful. So that's it. Thank you all so much for some of your time tonight. And now you see why they're two of my favorite people. By the way, that was like a daunting number. Allie started in January of 2020. I feel like I've known Allie for like 10 years. Like we literally like we were emailing and then during their like, as they're going to the audit, like it just changed to like, here's my cell phone number. And we were just like texting, but we were jumping on calls with like B Corp consultants in California. Like Heather Paulson jumped on a call and helped us discover like, what a great asset Get Comfortable was as far as getting points on the assessment. We literally, I don't, I'll just say I sent it so I don't get anybody in trouble, but we paid her with a six pack of Tropicalia. So, um, <laughs> uh, but it's just been fun. It's been fun to watch y'all's journey. And I know all of the intricacies of like the things you're working on, the priorities you have, the things that you measured and said we can do better, um, which is which is what you were touching on. That's that's the beauty of this assessment is going through and going like, oh, we care about our community. OK, how much? And then when you have to figure out how many hours did we volunteer last year? How many what what did we donate to charity? What was our impact? What type of pro bono impact did we have um, when you actually have to quantify that? Sometimes it's a it's a tough look in the mirror. And that's the beauty of the assessment, though, is you, you are on the journey and now you can put a strategy together to improve it. So my next group of speakers, um, by the way, I, I don't know, panel discussions are great, but I love hearing from a variety of people. So my next group of speakers kind of brings it full circle for me because the original project that we did was when I was an MBA with Ad Victorium Solutions and our CEO, we had eight employees at the time. Our CEO reached out to Jake Mosley. Jake Mosley went, I don't really know what a B Corp is. So Net Impact Club, he Googled it. Net Impact Club seems like a good fit. Email comes to us in the Net Impact Club, the members. And I think four or five of us show up to this meeting on the fourth floor at Corel. And we go like, that sounds cool. We still didn't really know what a B Corp was, but we decided to do this project for Ad Victorium Solutions. I ended up continuing on that project for three semesters. Uh, never hurts to uh, buddy up with the CEO because I'm still working there five years later. So that all started with Net Impact, and that's kind of where this whole process started. I brought Zach in the next year and a group of students to help us prepare for our audit. Not that we really knew what an audit was or that they were going to be able to do much for us, but that kept the ball rolling. And now it comes full circle because. Two weeks ago, I was at a Net Impact meeting because they asked me to come back and speak and talk about B Corps. And so tonight I have 
the president of Net Impact, Aaron Parks. And then I also have two, uh, well, Michael's a VP, Crystal's a member, and they're also both taking my class. So, um, I mean, you know, watch what you say. And, uh, but yeah, we're going to bring them up on stage. Aaron's going to talk about Net Impact at UGA, and then Michael and Crystal are going to come up and talk about their experience working on B Corp projects in the university and what it means. Oh, Aaron's coming up on her own first. Michael's looking a little shy. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, like Nathan said, my name is Aaron Parks. I'm a second year MBA student at the University of Georgia, uh, concentrating in marketing. And before joining the program, I was working at a nonprofit where I enjoyed the work. I was having a lot of, I was making a lot of impact there. But one of the biggest topics that we talked about was money. And so, you know, it's not exactly something that you would think uh, would be a, a big topic of conversation at a, at a nonprofit. Um, but it was where I really started to think about how business works. How do things work? How do you make change in the world that we live in? And that was when I started to do some more reading. I started learning about B Corps uh, and that this was not just a couple of corporations who uh, wanted some good PR or wanted to you know, get on the sustainability train, but they were really interested in, again, changing the world and, and making a, a big impact that had a ripple effect among their employees uh, and, and, and in their business, and their businesses were better, and then their, and the business did good in the community. And so that was something that I really uh, was interested in, decided that I wanted to be a part of, and so I went back to business school. And I came back to UGA specifically because Honestly, Athens is home. I went to uh, UGA the first time as well as an undergrad student. And, and I saw net impact. I saw a net impact. I saw uh, this interest in uh, social innovation, the uh, concentration there, and was really excited about uh, calling Terry home again, uh, UGA home again, as a place to start my next journey in the business world where it looks different. And so what is Net Impact? Net Impact is a global organization that really has a mission of rallying all the people together like me, students, professionals, who are interested in business doing good. And what does that look like? And how do we make that change? And so for the UGA chapter, we're dedicated to bringing those opportunities to students. There are some of my classmates here. And my classmates will come up in just a second. And so we're dedicated to bringing those opportunities to campus, exposing them to uh, ex exciting business owners and entrepreneurs and people who are really taking action in this movement and empowering them to take it to the next level and take the next steps in this movement as well. And so uh, standing on the shoulders of giants, Dr. Chatterjee said, uh, the club definitely uh, Zach is here, and, and so we're just trying to continue that legacy. And uh, we also participate in community service events in the community. Uh, Michael, as the VP of Community Engagement, leads our food drive every year. And we have a lot of really great programming in the spring around career and professional development, and specifically in the space and with ESG careers. And so with that, I'll uh, let my classmates talk about their experience in the course and uh, what that does for them. Thank you. Hi friends, new and old. My name is Crystal. I'm a second year MBA candidate focusing in social innovation. Uh, I'll start with my hard elevator pitch and then get a little bit more comfortable. Uh, I came to UGA in undergrad and my background was in early childhood education. I wanted to change the world and I thought the best place was to start and the people of tomorrow. Um, but then I realized that screaming five-year-olds was not fun. So I decided to go into property management. Uh, and in that, I got to see the impact that community had. And I was the big bag wolf that had to call and ask about paying rent and evictions, which is super not my vibe. But it really helped me to get some experience with the idea of professionalism and humanity. Uh, so I came back to school. And when the pandemic hit, it was just my time to come back. Um, and I knew that business has a really unique opportunity to connect the world. and I don't think I even knew it, but I was saying every single thing that meant CSR, ESG, all those things. 
And I had no idea what Pandora's box I would open by messaging Nathan on LinkedIn. I said, hi, let's talk. And then it's Nathan. And so through that, I've made so many connections. I've fallen in love with the impact space. Honestly, I, I wouldn't have survived without people like Nathan, like Dr. Chatterjee, like Zach. Honestly, I think Zach was the one that told me. He was like, there's like a reincarnation. First came Nathan, then came Zach, then came Crystal. And we're all just problem kids. And problem kids are the ones that make a difference. And we're shaping the program. So big shoes to fill. But I think everyone that has come up here makes it sound like it's they make it look easy to get this certification, but that ish is hard. We're doing it right now with Maypole and you can just see all the effort that goes behind it. But I think the important part is to notice that like, I couldn't imagine my program experience without the path that Zach and Nathan and Jake and Dr. Chatterjee and all these people that they've paved for me. So the work that you're doing, it might be hard, but so worth it. And I'm so excited to be a part of making it better for the next crystal. Hey everybody, my name is Michael and yes, I have notes. I've been over here getting hell for them, but uh, if not, we'd be here 20 minutes later and you'd be like, what did you just say? And it's the whole night, it is, whatever. Um, but anyway, so my name is Michael Johnson. Uh, I'm a current second year uh, MBA student here at the University of Georgia, uh, focusing in uh, HR management, social innovation, and business analytics, even though I was questioning that earlier today after my predictive analytics exam grade got back to me, but it's cool. Um, anyway, I completed my undergrad here at UGA in 2018, uh, graduated with a degree in social studies ed and a degree in history. Um, in between my time of going to school, I taught at one, obviously, given the degrees. Uh, I was a middle school history teacher, uh, coach varsity football, middle school wrestling, middle school baseball, uh, and a lot of different stuff. So I'm here today, uh, as Nathan's mentioned, uh, and some others, uh, representing a few different groups. First off, obviously, is the MBA program. Because uh, that's what I'm, you know, in school for. Uh, but I'm also Nathan's nonprofit board fellow, his first ever one. Yeah. Um, for yeah, please clap. Uh, no. Uh, woo. Yeah. No. Uh, anyway, but I'm his first ever nonprofit board fellow for Be Local Georgia, and also VP of Community Engagement uh, for Net Impact with um, Aaron over here. So the reason I give all this background info is not because like I want you to know my life story or I want to talk about myself, though I enjoy doing that quite often. Um, it's because I'm here to talk about why I'm in the current stage of my life and why I'm involved in all these things in UGA and Athens and my thoughts on how to attract people to the B Corps movement uh, more. It's something me and Nathan have talked about a lot and I've heard him say a lot about. So um, go back in time to 2013, 2014 when I'm a senior in high school um, and I'm coming into UGA. I'm an intended MIS major with the international business you know, focus or whatever it's called. I'm going to minor in German. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to fly in private jets. And if you don't believe that and you don't go along with my idea or you don't want to do that, you're an idiot. So I thought that. And um, if you remember what I said, I ended up doing that completely changed. Um, so during my first week of college, and this is not to get sappy or sad or anything, but uh, my grandmother passed away and she was my best friend. She was my third parent. Um, and it really hit me hard. So trying to deal with this, I'm sitting there talking to a lot of people that influence me. I'm talking to a lot of, you know, uh, trying to figure out what do I really want to do. This made me question a lot of stuff. And my grandmother was that kind of person that would do anything for everybody. She volunteered all the time. She was the sweetest person ever. And I figured, you know what? I want to be like that too. So being the good college student that I am, I did the cliche here and drop ad week of my freshman year. I changed my major and I'm like, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to help people. And anybody that wants to make money or do business is automatically the devil. So my mindset completely changed uh, one way to the other. So I do all that. I teach for two years and then I'm like, yeah, this is not going to cut it because I'm working 60 hours a week. I'm, if you know what teachers make, you know what I'm talking about there. They don't make a lot. So I'm like, I'm not making anything. Um, and I got burned out very quickly. So I'm sitting there having my quarter life crisis at 24. I say quarter life because God, I hope it's not half life or midlife because I'm trying to live past 48, though the, you know, the weight doesn't help. Um, but anyway, I realized I like helping people um, like I did in teaching, but I also realized that, you know, making money is not the worst thing and, you know, it's something I should do. So I decide during my quarter life crisis, um, I need to find a way that I can help people and also, you know, make some money and enjoy a lifestyle that I want. So 
I decide I'm going to go back to school because I'm checking out the job market and I found out, no offense to anybody if you have these degrees, but if you have a history degree and an education degree, the only thing you're qualified for is a history teacher. So I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. So here comes school. So after some research, uh, I'm like, I'm going to do an MBA. That sounds cool. And I'm like, I went to UGA for undergrad. Why not go there? So I look into the program. I'm like, it might be a stretch, uh, honestly, to get in there. But I'm like, I can do that. HR suits my skills, my interests. So that's cool. Um, so I look into it and I see this social innovation focus. And I was like, that kind of really caught my eye because I was like, OK, that's awesome for two reasons. One, I'd love to add that in one of my focuses along with HR because it seems like a great way to meld my interests of wanting to eventually make some money and help people. Uh, it also showed me a lot about UGA's MBA program. And that's really what hit hard is it shows that UGA's MBA program cares more about than just like strictly business in the Milton Friedman sense. You're welcome. You're not looking. You're welcome. I should have uh, said bad stuff about Milton Friedman. I know. I know. Um, anyway, and it showed that they care about the impact on the local community, the environment, being good stewards of what, they've been, what they've been given and caring really about how graduates go out into the world as a force for good, not just a force for, you know, money or status and all these things. So this really sold me uh, on the fact that business can fit both this idea that I want of, you know, make some money, but also do some good in the world and help people. So all this combines into my main point, because you're probably like, I right, get on with your biography. Uh, but anyway, so with individuals like myself, a millennial, though I'm in that weird millennial Gen Z like crossover, where I don't really know what I am um, and the upcoming Gen Zers. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for growing efforts within the B Corp movement. So our generations, you've probably heard, you know, tend to care more about uh, social movements, environment and lasting impact and things. So a lot of people, though, tend to be stuck in my predicament, I feel um, like when I hit my quarter life crisis, they want to help others, but they want to make enough money to you know, sustain a certain lifestyle or just to get by. So I, this is my opinion, this is just my thoughts, but I think to attract more people, especially younger people like myself, um, who are entering the workforce and to bring them into the B Corp movement and to being more uh, you know, conscious of their actions within business, we need to show that there's not, that this idea of helping others and making money, it's not a dichotomy. It's not you know, an either or, if you sell your soul and you can live a lavish lifestyle, or you can live in destitution, but help others. Because I feel like that's kind of the bad rap that a lot of this stuff tends to get. You know, talking to my friends who live in Atlanta or New York that are in investment banking, they're like, you know, that's all good and well, but you're not gonna do anything. And that dichotomy really is not good. And we need to, you know, get rid of that stigma. So I believe that, you know, getting rid of that stigma can be done by showing places like Advic, Creature, Tillamook, and I give them a shout out because they're cheese and ice creams out of this world. Uh, and all these other places and people who are here today represented the B Corp movement. So these places that care, but are also business savvy, places that know and understand their wider reach and impact, places that live up to their word. And also by showing that, you know, you can be more conscious in your everyday work, even at a large corporation, a small uh, difference, even in your actions, you know, anything small, those eventually add up to something larger and, you know, can really change these corporations who are never going to think of being a B Corp. They never will. But you know, it can help make some sort of little change and little changes are better than nothing. So, I mean, for instance, I'm going to work at a giant retailer in Atlanta. Um, they sell home goods or home supplies and home improvement and orange. So there you go. But anyway, um, I'm going there, but uh, I don't plan to give all this stuff up because what I value and what I've learned from Nathan, Jake, you know, Dr. Chatterjee's econ class. And I plan to carry that with me and to influence my everyday work. So as I'm wrapping up, I'm, you know, and probably on way over five minutes and rambled and mumbled and everything. But anyway, uh, please don't take this as me preaching or saying this is what anybody needs to do. Or I know the answer because I'm not an expert. I'm just working on my first B core assessment with Maypole this semester. But I'm simply a person who found themselves in a position that many people these days, I feel like, especially in my age, are finding themselves and just wanted to share my thoughts on how my interests have meld. Uh, how we can help others do the same and, you know, how this movement can grow stronger. So uh, with that, if anybody has seen a large, very large Columbia rain jacket, that is mine. And I need it back. But aside from that, here's Nathan. He weaves so seamlessly in between his speech and his plea for his jacket back. I love it. Um, but also, I just I love what all of them said, like literally. I always, I always tell students, like, take the initiative. Like, your career search is your responsibility. Um, yes, I know Paul Lair is here somewhere, but, you know, Paul's job is to get you hired, but your job is to find what you want to do. 
So Crystal reached out to me very early on. And honestly, once like at least the outdoor of normal bar reopened, I just am like, I'm going to meet an MBA student. My wife looks at me like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know. She wants to talk about B Corps. And Aaron hit me up very early and her time at UGA. And I literally remember one day I was painting the deck on a call where I was like, no, 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 I got time for you. And I'm like, literally took the day off to finish painting the deck. And I was talking to Aaron about B Corps and sustainability and net impact. Um, and then Michael as well, just jumping right into be local Georgia, jumping on the board, serving us and helping us kind of continue to grow this. So it's great to hear the students. I think that's why anybody who works in higher ed, or I guess I do kind of now, um, that's the reward you get is hearing those words and that passion. And I loved Michael's speech too about um, wanting to make money because I think B Corp sometimes take about it. People assume like, oh, so you work for a nonprofit. And you're like, no, 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 no. We, we we make plenty of money. We're doing all right. Advic's doing all right. We 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 have 140 employees now. Like we're doing just fine. We just believe in making money in a way that allows us to sleep well at night and rest on our values and our ethics. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. So profit, profit, profit. And honestly, for somebody in my position, Matt's position, if you have a percentage goal. The more profit you make, the more impact you have. So anyway, I digress. We have two speakers left. And I i mean, I'll disparage the rest of the speakers if I say we save the, the best for last. But we have two amazing speakers left. We've had some amazing speakers already. And you're like, Nathan, shut up and introduce the next speaker. So I will. I'm going to introduce the amazing Michelle Pearson Tucker. Like many of our speakers so far tonight, she also wears multiple hats. She's a financial advisor at Edward Jones. But for tonight's sake, she is the co-founder and chair of the Minority Business and Nonprofit Association, which strives to be a bridge connecting founders of color to knowledge, resources, and financing. She also, uh, her organization also does a hell of a job if you need a pay equity analysis done and you're trying to decide, do you have any unconscious bias in your pay rates, in your promotion rates? Uh, we did one earlier this year, it's fantastic. But I will also say to Michelle's credit, if you've ever exchanged emails with her, uh, I mentioned a day job, a nonprofit she runs, uh, and then her email signature includes seven nonprofit boards that she serves on. So to say she's a beacon of giving back to the community and a champion of equality and equity for everybody is an understatement. So I'm going to get out of the way and let her talk. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Like Nathan said, my name is Michelle Pearson Tucker, and I am I'm the chair of the Minority Business and Nonprofit Association. Our primary mission is to connect minority businesses and nonprofits with resources. We hope to educate, train, grow, develop, and sustain those organizations. And how does that connect to a B Corp, you may ask? Here's where we come in on the other side of our world. We also have affiliate members who are our corporate folks. And a lot of organizations say, we're doing this good work, we're doing the cause, we're doing everything right. And when we ask the question, well, what does that look like when we talk about contracting? What does that look like when we talk about your hiring? What does that look like when we talk about your C-suite? The diversity conversation goes on mute most times. And so for MBNA, while we want to grow and help sustain those nonprofits and those entrepreneurs in their own space, we also know that guess what? <laughs> I think Michael said it best. You actually kind of need money, right? And so if they're going to be working with people in this space, this is where we come in from the corporate side. So, and Nathan mentioned this earlier this year, what he didn't tell you about this story is we were on a whole nother call because we, Nathan and I talk a lot on different calls about different things. I'm on seven boards, right? But I talked to him about B Corp and I was like, yeah, I've looked into B Corp. But you know, the one thing that just got under my skin is that for the diversity section, one is under community and two is worth two points. That bothered me. <laughs> and I was like, so, huh? I thought about B Corp, but I kind of put him on the back burner. And I think Nathan took that as a challenge because he came back and he's like, you know, I want to talk to you more about this. And so we probably spent another 30, 45 minutes on the phone having a conversation about MBNA and the portion where we step in with our affiliate members talking about helping them understand 
how diversity, equity, and inclusion plays a role in their corporate responsibility. And so when we actually went down this road, Nathan said, okay, thanks for that. We'll be in touch. And I think maybe two days later, <laughs> I got an email from Nathan saying, I got one of my B Corps that wants to work with you on one of these diversity, equity, and inclusion audits that y'all do. And I said, great, let's talk about it. Here's what we need. <laughs> and specifically, they want to do a pay analysis. So I'm going to pause right there and step back and answer the question that I know is burning. What's a diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI audit? It truly is when we come in with your organization, you set the parameters of what is it that you've been working on? What area, what matrix are you trying to change within your organization? And how well do you think you've done? A lot of organizations, we have, we have three categories that we put them in. A lot of organizations say, no, we're good, we got it together. And we ask, so give me your numbers. How many people do you have? And I'll also say this not just mean black folks. We're really saying, how many women in your organization? How many are in the C-suite? How well do you pay your people? We're asking really detailed questions, but it's not based on what we want your organization to do. It's what you said your organization is going to do. So met with the person and they said, we want a DEI audit. And the one thing that they bragged on that stuck in my mind is that we did a really good job. We have a lot of women in our organization. We're doing great. And you know what? He was right. They had 52% women within their organization. Here's where our analysis came in when we took that data and kind of peeled it back. Out of that 52%, I think it was 4% in the C-suite. And I asked, what was going on there? Why? He didn't know. But for us, that's exactly what the DEI audit is about. He did not stop there because we got on another call and he's like, I want help. How do we talk about this? What's going on? I also complimented them because they had about 14% of Filipino hires. That's great. That's odd out of Atlanta. We noticed that their Hispanic, African-American community was down low, but they're doing really good. Something is working in recruiting the HR process and hiring folks that are coming from the Philippines. Something's working there. Keep doing that, right? So it was a compliment. Keep doing that. It's not all bad. I just don't think when, after we got the, the Zoom, I don't think he ever thought about what they were actually doing, particularly outside of word of mouth. But something is working because guess what? They come and they stay. So retention is also important. So when we talk about DEI audit, it's not just saying how many folks do you have on your front line. It's how happy are they working there at the organization? How well are they paid? How long do they stay? Who are the people working there? But it's all built around what the cor company, the corporation may be wanting to do. It's not what we define for you. So if most companies, they don't think they're at that level, and that's okay. Our two tiers before that, we have one that's, hey, I think I need to be doing something. I just don't know where to start. We have a questionnaire that you can take back to your organization. You can start having it with whomever that may be. I always recommend HR and the C-suite have to be involved. But at least it's a questionnaire to get you started. It has probably like 30 questions on it. And it takes time. It is not an overnight fix. The second level of folks that we work with are the folks that say, hey, we've done the questionnaire. We kind of have an idea. Where do we go now? They're in the consultation phase. And so sometimes it's just a, us consulting and working with them to grow and develop and create what the metrics will look like before they reach the ultimate level of a full DEI audit or a pay scale audit or whatever that should look like for your company. So B Corp has another place in my heart. Thank you to Nathan. But I also want you to take away the thought that we are doing some of the work, but there's always more to do. Does it go beyond the walls of your corporations? And the answer is yes, because you'll have plenty of minority businesses and nonprofits that are coming to your organization saying, how can I get involved? How can I help? How can I work with you? What does that look like? And if you discount them and throw them away, then you're still not serving your community as you should. And so we encourage you to do so. So you can find us on the mbna.org if you have any more questions. I'll be around. I clearly have a shirt on so you'll know it's me. So thank you, Nathan, for letting me come out tonight. <laughs> well, it's one of those things I always say about the B Corp community. And granted, Michelle's like part of it, but she doesn't work at a B Corp. But I always say that like you get inspired. Like I went to the B Summit in Amsterdam, which, by the way, Funny story, I thought it was a global summit. I was the only American there. And I realized then though that I had found my tribe because you find people like Michelle who are 
make you feel like you're doing nothing in the world. Like, oh my God, that's so inspiring. Like how many nonprofit boards and the work you're doing and the fact that you're working a day job and also doing this work on the side just because you're passionate and the work matters. And that's kind of what gets me out of bed to people are like, well, you do so many things and you never sleep. That's why, because change needs to happen and somebody needs to do it. So um, Michelle, thanks for being here and just um, tough act to follow. Um, but cats here. Um, and honestly, I didn't plan it this way, but what a great tie in from diversity, equity, and inclusion to, um, what cat does and what the company she works for does. So, um, to introduce cat Muhammad is first to say she is the much better half of Felix in the back. Um, <laughs> Um, who also, I do what I can. So they own, they co-own uh, Munchot together. And then, you know, in her spare time, she's the chief operating officer for one of our newer B Corps, which is Enrich Her out of Atlanta. Uh, Enrich Her is run by Dr. Roshana Novellis, is the CEO. And they focus on funding, financing, and tools for female founders and founders of color. And I'm not going to rattle off statistics. Cat might have some. Most of you in this room probably already know them, but like 99% of venture capital money goes to people that look like me. Um, and it's a giant gap. And there are people, passionate, passionate people stepping in to fill the void to figure out how to solve these problems. And Richer is one of them. And I'm excited to have Kat here to tell us more about it. All right, folks. We've been here before. Last speaker, long night, pre-Friday. So uh, I understand everybody wants to, to get moving. I'm gonna keep it quick and make it fun. So first question, does anybody have one of these? Cell phone? All right, I know I saw it in quite a few people's hands throughout the night, but can you take your cell phone out for me, please? Hold it up, let me see. Nice, nice. I see some of the new iPhones out there. Good job, folks. Uh, so next thing, unlock your phone. Yeah, oh, oh. sorry. The next one is going to really jar you. So take your phone and give it to the person next to you. Wait a minute. Now, this is amazing to see that people did this. <laughs> amazing. So... What I want to do to, to experience with that, uh, why would I do that, right? Cat is just crazy. Who would ask somebody to do that? Well, just like the folks we had up here tonight, your, your phone is a prized possession, right? It's an extension of you. Your businesses and the business that you want to own and run is also an extension of you. So why should you trust all these people up here telling you this business? The exact same thing. So as a B Corp, as you've heard throughout the night, it's a certification that gives you a stamp that says, you could trust me. You can trust that my business has social or environmental impact at its core, right? So thank you for that. <laughs> I wanted to, to share a little bit more. So who we are, uh, Nathan had alluded that Enricher is a business that helps people of color and women. We are a financial institution. We do lending. Um, and I am the, the chief operating officer, but I, I also assist on the finance side as well as the, the training side. I know in the crowd, I have uh, Steve Wolfenbarger. He is our director of HR and training as well, but we target entrepreneurs overall and more specifically aim to help businesses led by women and people of color. And we do this through capital, coaching, and connections. Those are the top three things that all entrepreneurs have said they needed to help them through on their journey. So I wanted to mention to you, when we received our um, B Corp certification and everybody that uh, mentioned it, it is no easy feat. It is easy when you're already on a path of doing the right thing. So you could always stand up and feel proud that you're doing the right thing. You just need to get the paperwork together. That's all it really is. But what I wanted to share with you all is the message that our CEO and founder sent out when we earned our certification. Because, you know, it's, it really is a, a, it takes a lot to go through it, but anybody that wants to earn their B Corp has their heart 
leading them the whole way. And I thought that her email that she sent out to all of us really um, illustrated that. So this is what she sent out. And this was to staff, investors, anybody that's been a fan of Enricher. So to all, it has been my dream to be the CEO of a B Corp for years. As of today, we have been officially approved after one and a half years of filling out paperwork, getting audited, and everything else. This designation is exceeding rare and points to our goal of addressing the greater good in all that we do. B Corporation is a global certification that encompasses equity, environment, human rights, impact, and so much more. I cannot put into words how it makes me feel to have this designation. And from there, every employee jumped in with a kudos, great job, we're so excited, we're so proud. And all of us have the B Corp uh, logo on our signatures because we are proud to get to this point. So as mentioned uh, by Nathan, I'm a founder as well, so an entrepreneur and a, a, somewhat of a, a local Athenian, I'm not too far off. My husband is some, oh, he's in the crowd, um, with my daughter actually as well, Nyla, our six-year-old. <laughs> I love bringing both of them to these events. Uh, you know, entrepreneurship is truly a family thing. Like, it, and one, having the support, but you really can't always get childcare. You can't always have one partner run in the show while the other one's on stage, right? Sometimes you gotta come together in order to make it all happen. That's why we're all here tonight. So B Corps, right? You see the need to give back and uplift the community. That is what's happening in Athens right now. If all of you are either business owners or looking to open a business here, know that after COVID-19, this area, this community was impacted just like the rest of the US. So now is the chance to step in, right? If you see something that you are so passionate about, now is the time to take advantage there are grants out there. There are other uh, organizations that are supporting social impact as well as environmental impact causes. So we are all here today to share with you how all of us are showing up in this world, right? With a goal matched with execution to make a positive and lasting impact. We turn it over to you all now. How can you show up in your own way? The answer to that is not, is, well, the answer to that is going to be unique to you. So I can't tell you uh, what that looks like for everybody. What I can tell you though, is that creativity and brain power are optimal on a full stomach. So please pop on by Muncha Deli and Store. It is two blocks away, <laughs> right across from the UGA Arch and come see Felix and myself, and actually Nyla sometimes too, she's there, uh, and our super fun staff, right? We have you all covered up to, all the way up to 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> what? Oh, one second, little one. So thank you all for your time. Enjoy the rest of your night, and I hope that we'll all see you over at the Munchet and also on the Be Local uh, Georgia website. So thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs> That's how you like pull the caboose there, just pulling yeah, exercises, activities. I said, I, I, tough act to follow. She did it. So um, thanks to everybody for, can, can we get a round of applause for all our speakers too? Um, that was just, I mean, a wonderful event. I love, I love the calls to act. I love that last call to action. Like I have a shirt. I, I literally got a shirt made. I don't know why I get so many shirts made, um, but it says take action, make progress. I think a lot of us in the world are like terrified because, you know, like climate change, like you're nobody in this room is going to solve climate change on their own. Honestly, nobody in this room is going to solve the diversity, equity, inclusion problem on their own. But because you can't solve it on your own doesn't mean you shouldn't get involved. Doesn't mean you shouldn't make your ripple of change and, and, and see that through. And your ripple will meet somebody else's ripple. My ripple met Zach's ripple, met Crystal's, met Aaron's, met Michael's, and it's growing into a wave. Um, and then it's gone from UGA and our little ripple has met Emery's ripple. And those ripples continue to grow throughout the state, throughout the region, throughout the country, throughout the world. So take action, make progress. And then my last just closing note, <laughs> the funny part is these notes say this event goes till eight. It's eight. Um, but Creature's not closing. So what I will say is um, 
if, if people are sticking around, if your schedule allows it, be intentional, get out of your network or get out of your comfort zone and meet somebody you don't know, or meet that person you really want to meet, but maybe are too shy to talk to go up and talk to them, be intentional, network, think of how you can help them as you talk to them and let's work together to build a community of good. Thank you all for being here and thank you all for a wonderful evening. <laughs>